I am here with Francis Broom. Francis Hi. Reyes. Hello. It's almost midnight and kasi midnight session. Eh, matanda na siya. <laughs> so, I'll try to make him sleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, tomorrow's a week. You know, tomorrow's a Saturday. It's a weekend. But, um, you know, uh, kids, if there are any kids watching this, you know, you take... You know, take you take time for granted and whatever. Oh, you know, I'll sleep whenever I want. I'll wake up when, whenever I want. But you know, um, when you hit fifty three, even even if mentally and emotionally you know you can handle it, the body says no. And if you have a day job, even if it's a weekend, um, your your middle aged body says, "Wala kang trabaho bukas," but um it's probably best for you if you you know keep that um that that, that clock consistent you know what i mean and it, and it, and it's really good yeah so yeah, yeah but, um so you're on your third beer though is does it help you sleep or something uh it depends on the beer um there are certain um i can i can i can go on a uh, an an elaborate um uh, lecture on which beers will help you. Um, well, all beers will 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 put you in a good mood. But um, if you have a beer or two, and then before you, before you sleep, uh, there are certain beers that will mess with your sleep, and there are certain beers that will um, enhance your sleep. And when you wake up, you're you're all fine. But I don't think I don't think this conversation with we're having is about beer anyway so uh, <laughs> who knows but we can get a top, you know ibang ibang episode na lang oh yeah. pero baka we can get a beer sponsor hello okay anyway oh god yeah <laughs> um, wag lang, wag lang, uh, yeah uh, no, mentioning, yeah. Yeah, no mentioning yeah no mentioning brand all yeah. beers welcome yeah. <laughs> all beer all alcohol is well is welcome oh nga, yeah come on guys sponsor yeah. it's midnight our audience likes to it, you know, dude, enjoy. you that that's all that I have. Your toaster roast, you know. Um, we, <laughs> uh, Kim and I keep saying the same thing. Oh, you know, toast to that. And and by the way, we're not sponsored. You know, doesn't matter. Yeah, beer or or or, or tea, whatever. You yeah, sponsor. Yeah, Ooh. That, that's so. That's a gift you have is that you can talk about any topic. And that's what served you well. But I think most people would know you. Well, first of all, from the dawn, of course, when you had sure, long, yeah. long hair. Yeah, which I can't grow anymore. <laughs> Another. I think this episode is called Signs of Middle Age. Hello. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you for thinking of me. You said that. No, it's not. Um, oh, yeah. We are forever young. Um, so yes. the dawn. And one thing I found out is your name. Is yeah. it not? Is it not Francisco? No, it's not. It's uh, I can. Why, why I do we call you Kiko? Of... Why do we call you Kiko? <laughs> hey, you know, um, I think we can blame the Spanish for conquering us for four hundred years. I don't. Uh, Francis Francisco. Pag uh, uh, automatic Francisco Kiko. Mm-mm. Francis Kiko and um, and yes, my it does say on my birth certificate it's not Francisco, it's 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 Francis and um, actually you know within my family, I wasn't um, I was rarely called Kiko when I was growing up. I was mm-hmm. um, I was called Franz with with a Z. Of Ooh, course, if like you're German. Germanic, then yeah, it should be Franz, right? Mm-hmm. And and if someone sends me a message uh, with F R E N Z, uh, automatic, I'm you know I'm I'm a kid again. It's like oh that's family or that's a really close friend, or 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 whatever. Young young Kiko, I remember you know growing up and and when when family and friends would call me Kiko, I I, I would get really pissed off because. Uh, speaking of names, your DJ name is Francis Brew. <laughs> yeah. How did that come about? Of course, we started yeah. talking about beer. Is it beer the brew or brew bruja? No, no. Uh, okay. Definitely not 
the beer because um honestly uh my uh not to get too personal but my dad drank a lot of beer when <laughs> when i was growing up it was kind of per- personally for me a, a problem I, I i and i i did not drink beer until i was 23 oh, okay and that's uh god's honest truth uh the reason why i was called brew is because when i was starting in in nu107 and uh you, you you know you've written articles right um writing the article is it's not easy but it's 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 not as difficult as thinking of the title mm-hmm. even if you have the theme even even if the you know oh i'm writing about this but it's like a new title motherfucker what is the title right so when it came to having an air name i could i i, I couldn't think of anything so um so when i was uh training sa nu107 and and john gregory you GJ. know and and it's gj and jerry dress and and then uh see when i was training and you know still because uh, gj and jerry were were already in in nu and i was uh um pwede na pwede training or whatever hmm. and i remember gj telling me dude you better think of a name because um you're about to begin training and uh, and and chris chris cruz chris hermosissima is paging you on air <laughs> and it's calling you Francis Brew. I was like, oh. why? Oh, you know, it's it's your long hair. You, you don't, you know, you don't comb it, you know, because remember so this it's was Bruja. It's Bruja. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Uh, you know, people think because you know, when um there are people who know that I'm from Batangas and I love coffee, and so they assume it's brewed coffee and you know it's all but really it's 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 about the long unkempt ruly hair that i it's it's really bruja wow so, chris so, had a great way of giving people the always yeah nicknames <laughs> right yeah and uh so you've had like basically two lives this all related to music as a musician rock music uh, i've i've had more yeah. than two lives wow yeah, and tell, tell us about all, it all related to music so um so i'm i'm guessing your the the two lives you're just uh describing is uh as a you know any 107 dj and as guitar player for the dawn um i've also written Again, all re- related to music, uh, written articles and and reviews for Pulp Magazine. Uh, um, even when I was in NU, I would write articles uh, and concert reviews for different uh, r- record labels. Uh, I became a uh, music journalist. F- Uh, photojournalist for Yahoo Philippines mm-hmm. until they decided that uh, Yahoo did not need a Philippine musical editorial team. Uh, for a very brief spell, I was the editor-in-chief for uh, Billboard Phil- Philippines, which unfortunately, um, again, that's another topic for... That's, a, that's an entirely different topic, but that's, it's, it's one of those, um, oh, dude, what could have been? Yeah. Um, for the uh, Philippine music industry, because uh, okay. I made a commitment to to be involved in music. Um, I made that commitment um, when I was 17 years old. So that's. Uh, Whoa! Did you did you go to school at all for any musically related thing? Mm, musical school, no. What did you? Take I just in, loved it. Did you? What did you take in college? Uh, I initially, because uh, De La Salle University, um, initially Com Arts, Communication Arts, or or Mass Com. Uh-oh. <clears throat> I d- didn't do well. It's a quota course, meaning that you have to have an a GPA of, and of course, 
at the same time, I had my first girlfriend. So who said, you're not spending enough time with me. So um, the first girlfriend, not, not that I'm blaming her, but, you know, dude, I was 16, 17, right? Uh, <laughs> so I didn't do too well. And then so, uh, Salasal, then I had to wait another school year then uh, was another major then i decided to go into political science and minored in uh, literature um between classes i would go to the um the school library and um uh take out musical history books musical uh, music th- theory, books, whatever I, I can find about music. Wow. So talagang music. And w- how did you fall in love with the guitar? Um, ma- well, Filipino tayo. So the guitar is part of our culture, thanks to the Spanish. <laughs> uh, my, my, um, my brother, my, my late kuya, God bless you, Kuya. Thank you for, for everything. You know, he was the guitar player in the family. Uh, he was a natural. Also, he was a natural. He also, you know, he, he could... I think I can dance in the one, but, you know, my, my <laughs> brother had no... Inhi- he had no inhib- inhibitions whatsoever. So he was the... He could dance. He could, you know, whatever. He could uh, take apart a radio. Not that he could put it back together, but he could take apart a radio and he would tell, uh, he would tell me, ah... Uh, yung na para idal yung ano yung uh, yung frequency ng radio eto yun eh this this little thing and then we you know we take a, a small flathead screwdriver and mess with wow. it and whatever um but um kumbaga you know uh, if you have siblings you love and hate each other in equal measure right so Not whatever your brothers siblings, right? right yeah so my brother loved hot dogs i don't like hot dogs i'm gonna go with vienna sausages which has nothing to do by the way with never mind um, no, with vienna or sausage gotcha uh-huh. right you know stuff like that. So he was he was deeply into music and guitar. So I'm like oh, I'm not I'm not gonna be interested. In it. But then the, then you know uh, when I when I hit puberty and then I heard listening to R J A M. You know I, I I was into music. You know the whole family lo- loved disco and the Bee Gees. That was my generation and chic mm-hmm. uh, disco stuff. I didn't like rock because it was noisy and you know it's uh, music for drug addicts or whatever and guitar is noisy whatever that's my that's my kuya all of Mm-mm. that and then I heard Richie Blackmore of Deep Purple uh the uh, intro to a tune called Speed King and it was so wild and reckless and and it appealed to me as a 14 year old wow um pimp i'm i have a pimple oh my god i'm a teenager you, you know how so it appealed to me young the the wildness the the go for broke sort of thing now i was like this guy's playing guitar and i want i want to play guitar like like that, that. so I want to play guitar. I want to play electric guitar. I want to play rock, etc., etc., etc. So uh, Richie Blackmore, the intro, the intro to Speed King from the uh, In Rock, Deep Purple In Rock album. That's when I decided the instrument that Kuya is playing. I want to learn how to play that. When um, guitar players can probably. Um, relate to this when you're starting out like when i did when i first learned the the pentatonic scale and i can do a solo immediately i thought shit i can play guitar and i'm and i'm a really good guitar player of course 30 years later you know because you take the instrument and you take music seriously you go shit i don't know anything (laughs) 
I still feel the same way. Shit, I don't know anything. Um, but at 17, this is, I, I think this is one of those things where I think, um, I mean, you can learn anything at any age, right? But when you learn, when you're in your, during those years, when you're, your brain is developing and you're you're trying to figure out the world and whatever you're so open to a lot of things right mm -hmm. and to to this day you know if there's a new guitar technique or if i learn a new theoretical thing on 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 the keyboard or any instrument or any theor musical theor theoretical theoretical concept i go and then you know i, I start calculating but I remember when I was 17, it, even, if, even if I didn't know what a scale was or what a pentatonic scale was or how to put these two hands on, on the front, I, I didn't care, you know? Yeah. It's like, Ay, okay to, uh, oh, you know, um, experience is a great thing, but it can, it, it can also be um, something that, when you get older it's like no you uh, you know how you know how it works eh? so um when you're when you're when you're young and your brain is still developing and you know everything is possible right and sometimes the more you learn right you the more you know the more you don't know yep yeah okay and uh, for always people yeah yeah, for yeah. people who are watching, if you want a more in-depth guitar conversation, I just saw your interview with Perf De Castro. That was like, whoa, mind blowing. Especially if you if you like guitar or a guitar fan or a guitarist yourself, then uh, listen to that. Yeah. Perf De Castro. I don't know how many people watch that because you know I, Dude, I saw I saw like sixty thousand views. Or when was that malaki the first part? Of no it. shit, talaga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't. Uh, again, being you know. Uh, supposedly the online marketing had the uh, for for lyric the last thing i check is <laughs> it's <coughs> contradictory right yeah. the first thing that i have to check professionally uh, are stats and metrics and whatever but for my own self i'm like ah shit yeah when when perf and i did that i was like oh, a long thousand views i never checked the stats and then i you know the young next guest, you know, Manuel Lega, you know, of course, uh -oh, man, yeah, Rose I watched that right? too. Yeah. And, and all then, oh, 23,000, oh, shit, man. Oh, 16,000 views, ka, first part. Uh, tapos ila. Basta, it's all in the tens of 10,000s. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Because I don't want <laughs> to check. I just checked. But, okay, speaking of that, like quantifying stuff, when you were in rock bands, when you were in the Dawn and later, you played for other bands as well. Were you conscious of that? Like, oh, we're the top band, this, ganun. What, how did you approach performing, live performing especially? Mm, I just, uh, for me personally, I just did what I had to do and did what I liked. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. Did you? Um, oh, I'm curious because, like, you're you see, you're you could be a quiet guy, like in real life, but then you turn on rock star. You sh you told me about how um, the guitar came into your life, and you just felt it when you were 14. What about the whole performing and rock star aspect? Because you, with your long hair before, talagang made the thing, diba, on stage, and I think. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so where where did where did that come from? Like okay, I I have no perspective on that because uh, but you know, young. I mean, you know, in hindsight, looking at you know your my personal history and 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 taking into consideration how I guess some people would you know. See, see me, I guess. Yung, I, I never really thought of that. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, I mean, you, you know, you know me. We, we've, we've worked together. You know, 
Um, but um, whatever it is that people see, I guess when when I jump, when I would jump around or whatever before and bang my head or whatever, it it was just me na ano yung uh, oh god, I'm playing guitar with with a band. We're playing. Re- it, it was kind of automatic ne. Um, when when I was in grade school and high school, I've had stage experience in the sense that um, uh, I joined elocution contests and okay. oratorical contests, right? And um, I hated rehearsing. I hate. I hated practicing. I really hated it. And um, and I do remember you know being uh, on stage with the other um participants in 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 the elocution contest and and i would normally normally be the last one it sucks to be the last one because you see the first one and you know you're a kid and you go ah <laughs> you see the second one magaling yan ah you see the third one You see the fourth one. Oh my God! Oh, galing niya, galing niya. You're waiting for your turn. You know the worst part would be, you know, if if there were seven or eight contestants, I'd be the eighth. And the seventh, dude, sobrang. <gasps> Am I gonna pull this off? You know, oh, you know, after all the rehearsals and what. But, and you know, up to the those few seconds when I stand up from the chair and go center stage, uh, grabe. Mm-hmm. Then I'd mention the title of the piece, whatever it is, Cold Iron or The Despair of Judas or whatever it was. And then when I say the first line, For example, the despair of Judas, they have condemned him to die. My pulse would slow down. Wow. And then it's like, parang automatic na. I'm here. Okay na. I gotta do what I gotta do. Wow. And performing. Um, with with any band even with the dawn same thing parin and then you play that first note okay na because you know i think i don't know it's like nandoon ka na you have no choice you're there you, you know whether you were it doesn't matter if you were chosen or handpicked or you auditioned for it or what not you're there deliver hmm. you know and it just takes over so uh, the guys from the dawn can attest th- to this B- uh, before before um, any dawn gig I would throw up I didn't really throw up yeah but the moment I hit the stage well Anna it's like I'm wow. here now and you, you, you relax na eh, you know so cool. so does that, that and, and does that I, still I, I happen I, does that happen the, still like the, the throwing nerf, up the, well, I hope yeah. not wow the, the the throwing up the last time I threw up was um well um I left <clears throat> I parted with the dawn for for a few years and then when I rejoined It, it came back and uh, I remember this uh, this gig um, in, in somewhere in Makati and then oh tara, tara, tara. like and and this was like my probably the third or fourth gig when I rejoined mm-hmm. the dawn and I was like guys and then I started puking and then then In a jet and June boy, he looked back. Oh yeah, he's back. Oh my gosh! 
<laughs> wow. wow. Oh yeah, he's then every you know the other people, the the younger people in the staff were worried about me. Ah, sumusu kasi ni si Sir Gigo. Okay lang yan. Normal yan. <laughs> and and then we hit the first note and then okay na, you know. Yeah. It's just your body's way. <laughs> it's part of it yeah. preparing you. Cool. Yeah. So those are good tips people. Find your center and being nervous is normal. Um, but there's a whole generation, mga batang 90s, that knew you as Francis Brew. In fact, I think right. any some people who listened to you on the radio did not make the connection that that's you. Because the personality is different unless you talk about it. Um, was there any kind of nervousness about right, that yeah. being on air? Is it different, the feeling for you? Um, well, initially, yeah, you know, when, um, okay, when, when you're dream, dreaming about being a radio DJ, you're saying, oh, I'm going to do this and I get to play the, the music that I love. And then you go, <clears throat> uh, you go on graveyard training you're, and you're, you're just segueing, right? <laughs> and, and you're so frustrated, right? you know here here's the song from uh the alarm rain in the summertime and you can't say anything about it because you know uh dude ojd kala you work on your segues etc it's hilarious dial no sinabi na oh you can start uh pre-announcing and back announcing oh and the simplest <laughs> pre-announcing you fuck up yung... <laughs> because you're so excited right And then you get past that, and and the pre-announcing, back-announcing is easy because you know the alarm rain in the summertime, and uh, and after that was uh, I don't know whatever, etc., etc., etc. The next step is oh, pwede ka na mag-adlib. That's where, in your mind, the fun begins because when you're allowed to adlib. You do nothing. Of course, this is radio during our, you know, during our yeah. time because young, uh, you know, old school radio. We were stewards of uh, the artists and and the music, you know. So I remember. Oh, dude! I would go on and on and on and on and on and on. And then I- so segueing into radio now, of course, one of the top hits of your career would have been in the raw. Um, sure, how did yeah. that, uh, it was a radio program on NU107, wherein you found, it was demos, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so how did that, was that your idea? Was it someone no, else's idea? Okay. It was definitely someone else's idea. <laughs> okay. Let's start with my personal context. Uh, this was um, 97, 98 or something like that. Um, at that point, the dawn was on hiatus. I was um, playing session guitar for whoever, um, whoever wanted me on board. And it was all right. I, I was with P.O.T., uh, Joey Ayala, you know, Lou Bonavi and I don't know. But the thing with being a um, a session musician, at least the way I <clears throat> being a set, the the session musician that I was, um, if you had a gig, um, you earned something. If you didn't have a gig, you earned nothing, right? So what happened was um, I I reached out to uh, Kathy, see Roxy. Mm-hmm. Who was, um, I think, at that point, part time with NU and also doing uh, some work with a uh, with a cable channel called um, the I Channel. Oh right. Uh, it was under ABS, cable line, you know, really small, and so I I think we have, Sabini Kathy, we we I think we're looking for a copywriter. Okay. And and then she said, you know, I, I know you can write. So yeah, okay. So I was copywriter for for the I channel, and um, that was a great experience because uh, I was assigned to uh, watch hours 
hours and hours of episodes of Seinfeld. Wow. And per episode, I had to write copy for the episode. Yeah. Which is really tough because you know Seinfeld, right? Yeah. It's a show about nothing. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, gosh. Ah, but you know, but that but that was a great challenge. Um, I think it was also Kathy who said, um, I think you should talk to uh, Ron and 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 Claire. Because mm-hmm. they were um, uh, Claire was a program director and 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 Ron was a station manager. Right. So called me, you know, one day for, for a meeting and said, you know, okay, so Sabini Claire and you know, I, I, I was there um, almost at the beginning of NU107. Um, so one day um, Claire, I think it was Claire uh, who called for a meeting and said, um, well, you know, this, you know, you, you, you know, you were with NU and Bivol, we uh, always played demos, and there is a stockpile of demos that any one of seven receives. And they were thinking of a show to showcase the demos, and they were thinking of someone to host it. <clears throat> and they figured because I wasn't, you know, I had radio experience, um, I was active in the music scene, mm-hmm. so. They figured maybe I was the right guy for it because uh, again they, they they didn't have to train anyone new mm-hmm. uh, to do radio because they understood you know yeah how it worked and I had active insights into and 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 I think a couple of uh, our common friends said that. I was a very opinionated guy. <laughs> Although in, in my defense, you know, like cinema Irene, no, you know, we're all dude, come on, we all have opinions, right? But I think I would I would express an opinion in a very sarcastic manner, but in a way in a tie lang naman to, you know, you know you, a sarcasm is is half true half truth and half you know, it's all okay. Okay lang yan, you know. It's not like you want, you know, someone sounds bad, you, 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 you'll make a disparaging remark, but you don't wish them yeah. ill, right? You know, and you that's sarcasm. Yeah, you don't insult them. It's just... A, right, yeah. yeah. And so Claire said, and, and you know, you, you're very frank. And, and at that point, I was like, okay, yeah, 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 that sounds... In- that sounds interesting. It would be nice to, you know, be on radio again. So, so I did that, and then eventually, um, Ida Rock came first, and then uh, went back to being a regular NU DJ. Wow! And then you stayed after, you know, till oh yeah, until till the, the end. end. Yes. So yeah, you became and, you uh, became program director, did you? Uh, music director, not so much program. Programming mm-hmm. was uh, was Chris, but okay. music- so in the yeah. raw, I think in a way, besides your sarcasm, wit, and being frank with the artists, and some of whom became you know recording artists, um, I think they looked to you as a mentor, sort of. But at the time, you were oh, because you're a musician also. But now. Flash forward, you're actually a, a mentor, inspiration, role model to to a lot of musicians there in the Philippines and stuff. And so you're back once again to <laughs> come back, the return of the comeback, toaster sure, roast. Sure, yeah. In a new uh, digital, digital format, um, making do with what we have given the pandemic and everything. Right. So yeah. tell us about toaster roast. I keep plugging it with everybody, by the way, because. It's cool uh, stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah, because uh, the 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 NU one hundred and seven DNA is is there, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so when it, when NU shut down, of course, uh, uh, Indra shut down. Uh, 
it's 2020 and then and you shut down what, what do you know 20 10 years 10, before 20, 2010 or something 2010 like that. right uh so the last couple of years of in the row weren't fun for me in the sense that you know in the beginning okay lang eh. um and I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk at length about it. Dial, it's again, it's another episode. <laughs> um, but um, I think the last two or three years before NU shut down, um, there were a lot of changes in the world and and with the music industry and and music technology and all all of these things and. Um, well, the general thing is if a specific genre becomes a hit, mm-hmm. then the industry follows and they kind of want to, um, you know, mind that, you know, oh, me, Michael Jackson. Then, uh, then you know, during our youthful years. And then another record label will go, you know, let's find our Michael Jackson, right? Mm. And that's fine from a from a business music industry from the industry perspective i totally understand that but it's frustrating when the musicians and the artists themselves believe in, um, they have to sound like a genre you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. um when the eraserheads came out i remember that scene clearly there was the eraserheads there was yano there was Tropical Depression, there was Colored Red, and all these bands that I mentioned, none of them sound like... Right. Each other. Everyone else, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Exciting, isn't it? The first few years of In The Raw were like that. Mm. The last two or three years of In The Raw was like, yung nausi yung, uh, yung uh, new metal, nausi yung emo. Mm-hmm. And and I, at that at that time, I, I, I loved that music, right? Right. But then you, you, I started hearing local copycats. Na parang okay, you got the cliches and 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 the mannerisms, if you like, of, of these genres. But there's there's nothing new. Eh? Next, always I'm always looking for the next thing. And and even even with myself, when I try to play guitar or try to write music i'm guilty of the oh this is what i like and mm-hmm. then i'll but there's also the ito na yun eh. this is one of the, the these are one of the phrases if you like of of the music that i that i'm into right now but what can i add to this mm-hmm. right you know so the, i would always it's like okay, great. You sound like Fallout Boy or whatever. But but what else? You already have um, Fallout Boy or Death Cab for Cutie or whatever as your your you know not not to sound arrogant. You can very few of us can be greater than our heroes. But from 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 a certain perspective, our heroes, our musical heroes. Uh, speaking from a musician's perspective, they are actually our our, our takeoff points there, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's okay if you want to stay there and in 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 your own way, you know, expressing expressing yourself to, through the prism of of their influence. You mm-hmm. know, that's okay. Their music, mm-hmm. right? So maybe you know, maybe being in in radio factored in also a. Eh? You know, mm-hmm. you don't. I I don't want to play the same. I don't. As a DJ, you don't want to keep playing the same sort of thing. Personally, as a musician, I I want to keep growing as a guitar player and and as a as a composer, if you like, or as an arranger, whatever. Mm-hmm. So the last couple of yeah, two three years, and and I remember Chris and I uh, talking, and he was like. Chris was like, "Para wala bang bago?" Wow. There, there was nobody groundbreaking. Nobody. Yeah. 
it was frust and and you know it 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 wasn't uh, a Philippine thing. It, it was a global thing. Eh. Yes, it was. You know, parang wala akong bago. Wala wala bang may may, may sasampal na Uy, ano yun? Pero teka muna. May, may, may punto yan ah. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, so when, when when NU shut down and And, and I didn't have to do in the raw anymore. And and the last <coughs> band that was awarded the raw award was Flying Epis. And I, I you know, uh, all female, somewhat punk band, and and mostly um, they're mostly lesbian. Yung iba talaga eh, from 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 a. Um, sociological and music you know mm-hmm. all angles okay iba mm-hmm. you know and, and and it's not iba f- for for the sake of being different you know mm-hmm. they were who they were it's like shit yung yung ganyan you know they had something to say that's original to them yeah right exactly they were expressing their probably their individual and their collective uh, personality right and It's like great, but at the same time, you know, I was so exhausted. But I and even me as a, as a musician, you know, I, I, dude, I can't think of anything fresh or anything new. So uh, I kept saying, ah, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. and and as the years would would go by, you know, uh, knowing that a lot of people, you know, it doesn't matter, musicians, writers, photographers, whatever, can can put their their work and can publish their work without the need for an editor I mean, the, your your personal perspective your personal opinion is as valid as as anything on supposedly ed, as anything on 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 mainstream media where you know democratized there right yeah yeah so I was like who the fuck needs in the row who, who who needs my opinion who needs or even if it's not me who, you, who needs an editor who who needs that mm-hmm. it's not needed it's not needed it's not needed okay na you know and actually the the reason why toaster roast happened which or at least i said Maybe it's time for in the raw version two or whatever. Is actually because of the pandemic, <laughs> because of these online reunions. Yay! Because <laughs> the thing is, well, I, I I'm not sure about because you know I, I kept cutting out during the you know the, the Reun- first batch. Of, yeah. And uh, fortunately, solid yung signal ko during the new batch. But the 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 reaction was for that second one was it was consistent daw eh, na pwede pa bang magsubmit ng demo? Oh, 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 oh. It was consistent, and you know, I I I, I wasn't paying attention to the, to the reactions until. Um, Kim and her husband said, uh, ito yung reaction kasi, of course, everyone wants NU107 back. You know, everyone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pero overwhelming yung pwede bang mag-submit ng demo? Pwede bang humingi ng opinion? Ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. And then Kim and, and Briggs said, it's, maybe you should consider doing it again. I was like, no, 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 ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. And you know, see Briggs, Kim's husband, you know, being um, an ad agency guy, you know, and he's a producer and everything. And then it was like, "Hey, get to see any, you know," because I, I I did tell him, you know, who wants to hear an old fox opinion, whatever. Yeah. But he put it in perspective. Uh, he said, you know, no one's doing critiquing. So I, I thought about it, you know. <laughs> but you know, in a nutshell, um, we just 
decided sige you know let's trust that there are people who do want um that show in some shape or form um and 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 so far the reaction has been pretty good there are still comments na sana ibalik na yung enyo yung ganyan 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 oh uh, yeah forever so yeah so maybe some of it um is more for because it maybe because you know Kim and I being ex NU DJs and mm-hmm. and you, you, you know it's it's like um maski galibag lang na DNA ng NU 107 you know they'll accept it although thankfully naman and I've always prided myself in never hindi ako na personal with critiques it, it's a critique um constructive constructive i've heard always you. Yeah, yeah, yeah because and i um because <laughs> i'm a musician myself yeah you know if i'm going i if i'm going to dish it out i be i better be ready to to take, take it. it and whatever yeah. i whatever comment i have i i better not be a hypocrite you know yeah. i'm not perfect i'm pretty sure that whatever criticism i have i have and i'm writing new music with yeah <clears throat> with jet now and I'm writing, you know, because I'm writing. Baka mamaya, you know, a month from now, in hindsight, holy shit. <laughs> yung criticism ko. I'm Babalik actually, sa'yo. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that that's that's a constant concern for me. I think, to- Toaster, you were saying it's easy to release music. You can make your own video. You All don't right, have, yeah. yeah, you don't have to wait. But I think what's missing, and I think it's becoming apparent now, is parang a curator or a filter, someone to help you choose. Because I think yeah. what happened with the democratization of the media is, ang dami. So, Too you much, knew, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's where you come in or all of us come in where I think that's what they say when that's what's missing. It's like a, a filter so that you know what to listen right, to yeah. and um and then the second thing is i think because after those first reunions i did get submissions i'm like what am right? i going to do with yeah, these yeah. um i'll listen thank you but I, there's i can't put it out for you or i'll pass it on to francis yeah 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 but so i think they're looking for that they're looking for mentorship they're looking for an outlet because once you're selected even if you already have your own youtube channel right when we put our stamp on it oy okay to so i think you know you know you know what i think it is yung um you you the the democratization is it's it's romanticized din eh because look the the reality is i want to say what you know the democracy is i i'll say what i want to say express mm-hmm. exactly what i feel etc cetera, etc cetera. but the reason why you're doing that really is because you're trying to reach out and 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 hopefully reach out to someone who feels exactly the same way that you do so you know we we want some sort of we do seek validation and we do seek community eh you know mm. a focal point somehow even if it's you know little cliques if you like it's 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 just human nature eh? because we 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 don't as much as we exist as individuals um we do seek validation whether it's legitimate mm-hmm. truthful validation or fake news you know it's it's just human nature eh, you know um that's one of the things that uh that's one of the things that i was thinking about when you know when everyone was starting blogs right mm-hmm. it's wonderful uh that you, you didn't have to go to a A media news, outlet uh, yeah. mm-hmm. right you you know and and there's millions and millions of um potentially wonderful ideas out there but the truth is what's going to serve <clears throat> um a reasonable existence on this plane is really a handful of things that can be um identified as universal truths i guess 
Right. Right. People. Okay. But it's super late, Francis. I am so sorry to have kept you up, but stay tuned. Obviously, may part two, three, whatever, because you can talk to Francis Brew forever and you can tune in to Toast or Roast. And I'd love to hear more about your music with Jet, but I know, I, I will let you go because gabi na. <laughs> but, and we, can also, have, we can have another one anytime. Yes, yes. Kasi magaling na yung kanyang signal. Yes. Oh, and yeah. we're gonna do a reunion again, a Christmas show for you guys. So we'll see you then. Sweet dreams, Francis. I'll let you sleep. Yeah. And uh, everybody, um, hope to uh, hear from you well, when we do get together and uh, but uh, let's uh, let's all try to just be cautiously optimistic about next year and uh, the years that and the years afterwards and the uh, And we're, be, be there for each other. I know we can't yeah. be there physically, but we're here for you. And you're here for us. I think like, us talking to each other, it's expanded because we're talking to a community. And like you said, people are looking for that connection, for that community and your tribe and all that. So uh, yeah. And if all this. this positivity is cheesy for you um, and you go, oh, I'm lactose intolerant, you know, when you fart, you know, may release but it so it's you know it's still all good you know <laughs> we're cheesy ba ganon no or if you add that inaantok na kasi siya <laughs> alright <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much go to sleep thank you everybody bye Francis I'll see you in a week alright bye Thanks,